Hey guys, it's Chris Greenwood here, also known as Manifest. Welcome to this month's Masterclass in Fanbase University. Today, I get to sit down with my beautiful, amazing wife, slash business partner, slash designer, brander, um, videographer, uh, baby mama, baby mama and everything that else uh, that's helped me be successful in the music industry. So I'm gonna interview her and ask her a bunch of questions that you guys are gonna find super valuable. So get ready and let's get going. Um, babe, thanks for uh, sitting down with me today. Too thanks long. for having me. Thanks. Glad to be here. So question number one, talk about the early days in trying to get this thing going from you know the music side of it to the design side of it, because we really didn't know what we were doing when we first started. Yeah, well I guess I should let everyone know, uh, Chris and I have been together for like 100 years pretty much, so since I was 17. So um, when we were kids, like we were literally like kids when we got together and we were t started to date, and I remember Chris kind of had this dream of doing music at the time, and. So the first few years he was doing like, you know, a bunch of ghetto shows and stuff like that. And I'd go to these shows and be like the supportive girlfriend, you know. And then I got into college um, and I studied graphic design for three years at George Brown College in Toronto. Loved school. Um, and even in school, as I was figuring things out, you know, Chris was figuring things out in his music career. So he was trying to figure out, you know, how do I even put out my first EP? How do I, you know, do my first steps kind of just getting out there? and. And I remember um, one of my first real like funny memories is you know designing for Misled Youth, which is actually Chris's first ever music release, and it was a little EP that had five songs on it, and mm -hmm. it was enhanced. Remember that? Yeah, I had the music video too. Yeah. And I remember I didn't even barely know how to use Photoshop. I was still figuring out how to like turn on a Mac. I had no idea what I was doing, and. And I remember we went out one night and we did a photo shoot at night, remember that? Yep. At the skate park in Pickering, which is our hometown, Pickering, Ontario. And basically, I was like just playing with the camera, trying to figure out how to do long exposure, how to like, you know, make something fun, and make something cool with this shot. And I remember that became the cover shot. Yeah. Um, and, and it was just like a really fun kind of journey because I was in school, figuring out what I was doing. He was figuring out what he was doing barely knew how to like write music, how to make music, but we were just kind of like, I guess, figuring it out as we went along. Yeah. And I remember the night before we actually uh, submitted the EP, we were all like huddled around my old like PC computer That's right. in my room, and I didn't even know how to like put anything in, like how to actually do production for design, so it was like calling at a friend who was a designer and being like, help me like submit this, I don't even know what I'm doing, and all of us were just figuring it out as we went along, so I think that was kind of, I think that's my first real memories of like getting started with this whole thing is just starting and just trying stuff and like yeah. basically making a ton of mistakes, a ton of typos, a ton of like really bad design at the beginning and um, but just kind of getting going and I think that's kind of part of our early years that's I guess journey. you could say. Yeah and like done is better than perfect you know. Yeah. And I think you said it really good is just like you know we didn't know what we were doing but we just tried and you guys might not know what you're doing but just get out there you'll learn as you're going along. Yeah, right? I think like the mistakes is what makes it kind of authentic, which makes it kind of part of the fun, you know? Like we actually look back at some of the things that we did and the mistakes that we made and we just laugh. We're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we did that. But we just didn't know any better. You know, we we're just starting out, um, just trying to learn and grow and figure and it out. Some stuff was really cool. It's like, oh, that did work. And, yeah. And know. I think that if you don't start, you don't have a reaction. Like if you never yeah. start, if you never put out, you know, your first EP or single or whatever it might be, then it's like you never really know what's going to happen. And yeah. so I think just by starting, you start a reaction of, of response and start mm -hmm. like a kind of a movement. So here's another question. It's kind of broad, but what was one of the hardest moments um, in growing this thing where we're trying to build it, whether just for you personally as wife which of one? an artist? I don't know which or, one to choose. There's so many. Or just a hard moment where you, you know, that you thought we're, that we're just trying to get through together. I can obviously think of lots, but I want to Oh, there's yours. honestly, let's just be honest, there's a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of really cool uh, moments too, but. We'll get to those. Yeah, we'll get to those too. Um, I mean, I remember like sharing meals off the dollar menu at McDonald's because we had no money at all. And we had left our day jobs and we were like touring um, out in the middle of like cities and towns that we never even heard of before. And we were just trying to get from one place to the, the next on tour. And our families thought we were nuts, you know, um, remember? Like yeah. I, I think a lot of our friends probably thought we were nuts, but we yeah. just had this like, this thought inside of us. And people think that like I was like the crazy wife because I was going along with this, but 
the you dream were. was, it, I was kind of crazy, but I was, the dream was in me in, as well, just to really see this movement happen. And I think that's the difference is that when, as the partner or the wife or the husband, whatever, that if you also have the dream, then it makes you kind of have the endurance to kind of get through it all and like actually, you know, fight through it with your partner who's actually the artist. Because I'm not an artist. I'm not musical at all. You don't want to hear me sing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of crazy moments. Um, but yeah, I think of like, sharing chili from Tim Hortons yeah. in Canada we had to just because to we had or... zero dollars and even that felt like a splurge because we had we had no money and everything we were doing at the beginning was off of like our credit line and like had no money no no coffees out like literally we weren't even sure we'd, we'd be sleeping sometimes yeah and sometimes we sleep in like the car and like it was nuts for a while um and yeah I don't even think I told like my family some things because I was yeah. just like don't worry, we're having a great time and yeah. on tour. But yeah, there was a lot of really crazy moments, but yeah. it was all part of the journey. And, and honestly, we were young, we we're in our 20s. We didn't have kids yet, so we were just like, we're hey, fun too, let's go right? for it. Let's see some places and have fun. So, What do you think was one of my lowest or hardest moments, like where you're like, oh crap, like maybe I got rejected by something or just a time where like he's really going through it um, as an artist right now that might encourage the people watching? Well, yeah, I remember one of the hardest moments is actually pretty close to the beginning when um, we had a record label come out oh. <laughs> to yes. Canada um, to see Chris perform. Yeah. And we're all like, yeah, he's going to get signed tonight. And it was just like this big thing. And you've probably told the story to your community, yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were like, he's going to get signed. It's going to be like rock star lifestyle. It's going to be awesome. And then within, I think, a few weeks after that, we heard that you weren't going to get signed no. to that deal. And we were like, oh my gosh, devastation. Like, he was like totally devastated and like... I got shingles. <laughs> I think he like cried. You got shingles. Yeah, he got shingles. Sar's so, face is uh, one of my friends called He had called like me. shingles face. And it was just like, it was pretty freaky because the doctor's like, yeah, you could have like lost your eyesight and stuff like that. Yeah, it wasn't it was a joke. Up. I shouldn't even be laughing because it's actually pretty serious. But it kind of like, that was a really crappy moment it was just like now what so um, screw this almost yeah it was kind of like forget this then you know give and up, I'm done. so I think that that was probably your and one then, of your worst moments yeah. there's been a lot but yeah. um and then I went to the studio that weekend when I wasn't supposed to to hang out with the guy that's actually behind the camera right now which is Chris Stacy um and uh, he's the one that actually called the Sars face he's but a total trouble anyways maker. um moving on what does it take than for an artist to be successful? What do you think it takes, you know, these days? And I know it takes a lot, and if you want to cover a few things or just focus on one thing, that's fine. Well, I think, number one, I think it's just, it's about what we're talking about right now, which is going through stuff and having the courage to just not give up. Because I feel like there's gonna be a thousand things thrown out at you as an artist, if, you know, any artists that are watching, like, don't expect it all just to fall into your lap. I mean, obviously that's an obvious, thing to say, and it sounds almost like a cookie cutter answer, but the truth is, there's gonna be a ton of doors slammed in your face, there's gonna be people that just say flat out no to you, um, but if you don't quit, I feel like you have a higher chance of being successful than, you know, 99% of the rest of the artists out there. And I think that a lot of people just don't even try because they're like, well, it won't work, or I don't have the money, or I don't have, um, you know, this or that, or the time, or whatever, and they give themselves a long list of excuses as to yeah. why they shouldn't do it. Um, but I guess that would be my answer is that if you don't give up, um, that you have a higher chance of being successful and really just fighting through stuff. You have to develop a bit of a, a tough layer of skin and it's like anybody in any kind of show business or like even in fashion, I worked in fashion for many years, it's like you have to develop a sense of like kind of courage to be like, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm not being rejected, it's just my art or it's just whatever like it's not necessarily you have to kind of separate you from your art in a way and be like it's okay not everyone's gonna like what I do and that's yeah. okay so. and I kind of feel like being a bit of a jerk right now but it's like you didn't try just because you put out one EP or two albums or three you know put out four you know one show yeah. isn't trying you know 50 shows is trying a hundred shows is trying and really pushing through that that crap um, because a lot of artists give up after just you know the first song or the first little EP and they didn't get the response to the reaction they want yeah. so they 
put their tail in between their legs and they, and they cried and they, and they gave yeah. up, you know? Obviously, if you're watching this video, I know you're not that, but you know, it's, it's but, but more. That's what makes artists artists though, is that they are sensitive. Like yeah. artists, I, I mean, yeah. I'm one, like I'm sensitive. Right. So like artists have emotional responses and that's okay because that's what makes you an artist. Like that's what makes you awesome at what you do is because you have emotion, you are not afraid to express that. So I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but my point is, in the middle of all that, you have to be able to be, keep going and keep pushing. Um, so that would be my probably answer to that question. Yeah, and so what do you think is some of the misconceptions artists have about the music industry? Um, I think that like they're gonna be found, you know? I think that's probably the biggest one. And I think, um, yeah, that someone's gonna walk into their like, you know, studio or into their basement where they're writing their songs and they're gonna find them and say, wow, you're like the next big thing, I'm gonna make you famous. And I think that's still, one of the biggest misconceptions. I think that's being slowly broken down now that the artist is kind of getting more um, self-aware and more educated. Um, even like groups like this of just being like kind of self-empowered to know that you have a lot more power than you might realize. That's good. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions that someone else is gonna find you and like make you a success. I think nowadays it's about you making your own successful path and you actually saying, hey, I'm gonna call people I'm gonna book my own shows. I'm gonna like, you know, call down a bunch of photographers, find the one that's gonna work for my band and like make it happen. I think you have to kind of have a business hat on nowadays more than ever, um, just because the artist now, I feel like has more of that powerful um, position than they ever have. So that DIY. Or yeah, total DIY. Like you don't even need as much money as you did before because I feel like now with the way that the world is, you can like do so much creative stuff without having a huge um, expensive budget, so. And this is the thing, and we were talking about this in the drive down here, is that, you know, sure I was signed, but we kind of acted as our own record label because you kind of did all the artwork, all the stuff, we like, they handed it to the label. Do you want to kind of share yeah, a little bit Yeah, it was stuff? kind of, like, I mean, in your case, you had a licensing deal. So yeah. licensing deals are different because you're still in control of all your own creative stuff. Um, and I mean record label, it depends on the deal obviously, but in our case we literally would package everything, create it all, um, do the photography, you know, whether we had different photographers involved, um, you know, we had like, you know, Chris Stacy behind the camera right now doing videos, so we had like an in-house like group of us that were like making it all and then we'd literally give it all to the label and be like, here you go, all on a platter, now put it out. And so yeah, we felt like we were kind of having to figure out so much of it. Yeah, which was good because it kept us, gave us control. Like, yeah. we weren't like expecting the label to do this and do that. Like, we would almost do it all and then they would just distribute it, which, you know, yeah. sometimes we wanted them to be more involved, but sometimes I felt like the stuff they We're kind of like control freaks, I think, too. Yeah. Like, in the process of all this, I think we wanted more control because yeah. we were like, well, you know, you knew your fans, you know what I yeah. mean? So you didn't really want, I don't think, somebody else coming in, like, taking over Yeah, well, no much. one's going to care as much as us. Like, I remember when they did that lyric video for us, and they took your images, and they just put these crappy lyrics below it. And yeah, it we're just, like, seriously, that's like, it? Like, why did you even do, yeah. like, they just Not trying to, like, care. dog the label or whatever, right. but yeah, we just, we definitely, um, we like to have that kind of control, I think. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it valuable. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so that you can get the more content that I'm releasing. Also, if you're a struggling artist and you're just trying to figure out this music industry, you want to go full time with your music, you want to get noticed on social media or learn how to launch an album, an EP, or just get your music more marketed out there, I want to encourage you to check out my coaching program called Fanbase University. Every single month, I jump on the phone two times with my students and I coach them and I teach them how to market their music, how to get noticed, how to handle booking agents, record labels, and just get their music out there. Also, you get access to exclusive training. You get in interviews with music industry professionals. If you want to find out more and not do this on your own, not struggle because I've wasted thousands of dollars on my career and I, now I want to coach other artists. Check out my program, FanbaseUniversity.com or click the link below to find out more info.